Okay, let's just do a little intro. This is Charles Peterson. Um, it's a special edition today. I'm yeah. joined by Virgil Abloh in the browser basement. Yeah. Uh, how are you? You know, I couldn't... Saying that it's surreal to be here is uh, barely encapsulating it, but I'm honored to sort of share some words and sit down with you tonight and talk about uh, one thing that I know we both love, which is music. Virgil, come on then. Let's hear a few tunes. <laughs> what have you got? What's what have you got to play us? Little moments. Yeah, like it depends. What do you want? There's music that I'm working on. Do you want to hear that? Or are we allowed to share context? it? Are we allowed to share? Something? Yeah, yeah. I brought it to share. I Mate, made some I, 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 okay. Well, yeah. Let's let's hear some. Okay. I want to hear what you're working on. Yeah. So a little. There, there'll be three songs that speak a little bit about like where my head's at now and what i'm trying to do i have four here that are that i like good to to show the depth so me coming off my summer in ibiza playing at dc 10 and sort of finding a home and really looking at that as like a like a hollow space was uh playing circle loco and then of that close friends of mine or the martinez brothers and tiga from canada they have a song that they did and they asked me to remix it. So I did that. And this is, uh, this is my take on it. And it, and it goes back to uh, in an era that I missed, but was supremely sort of influenced by in a place of like, uh, you know, broken beat and the, the whole history behind that. So that's this, it's the, the Bless remix. <laughs> Wow, that was. I want to play that one for sure. That's, that's it. yeah. <laughs> you know, hopefully, it's one of them, and you'll see. Like, I'm playing a few different things. I'm, I'm not monotonous. You know, that was like an homage to like this uh, favorite producers that I've had and songs that i i recently rediscovered and it's funny on your show you've been talking about and i've heard you say a couple times like this like weird revival of like the broken by some younger people that are sort of cooking up and i think it's it's in a way linked to obviously those that are sort of trying to find a new sound or revive a sound but to me it's electronic music and it's black it, you know i think that's like there's been this for me it's like i'm from chicago you know and i and i like being from chicago and i like the history of chicago and i like electronic music you know i also like obviously people would assume that i love rap but i like electronic music and i close this summer to honey dijon and uh the martinez brothers who that's like a remix of and you know seth troxler and i think in america there's like you know black music is you know jazz culture and all these things and then you we're, we're contemporary we're all we're not sort of solely in the category of hip-hop and i think that was like the motivation to sort of go left and sort of pay an homage to you know daz iq and these uh, uh producers that i love you know and i want songs that are new that could possibly work in a club like a DC 10 and some maybe the end of the night when it's gotten a little bit free. And uh, while well, we were talking about what we're going to put in our USBs, and mm -hmm. uh, that will be in a category. <laughs> This is my broken house category. <laughs> it's jacking, it's broken. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I've always had a knack for programming drums, you know, just as like a my a musical sort of like fascination that as like a bed of a track always like the drums and also because the boys noise stuff that you put out yeah it's quite minimal yeah is that you on the drums yeah you? it was both of us okay. you know i spent two days in berlin yeah. and that was like, and that's like again it's like i have a group of friends that are creative and supportive and like hey let's do this mm -hmm. and alex boys noise was like come to berlin for two days I have this cool s setup and like let's just make some tracks like we've been DJing a lot and he was like 
he's about this sort of like, hey, let's like music isn't going to go anywhere if we all if I sit in the studio. And so with that, we made something for the club run that we were doing. We played Dude Club in Milan and we played Panorama Bar and just made it in the same sort of like uh same sort of week is just like something that to sit on our usb sticks and then we pressed it up and put it out but just as like a dj tool and then i hadn't done anything since then i kind of got like down this rabbit hole of fashion and but it's like did you play it out yeah played it out and it's so fun is that a bit weird playing out your own song? yeah it's weird well you know scrolling through and it's like wait this actually apply and then it's weird seeing other djs that i respect play it and in a setting and it's like and that's when it's like I got the bug. It's like you make more. You can't just make a few and sort of like, you know, we all have a million tracks. They all are useful either on a laptop or just good to pass around. And then you realize like that they're they're like little like little soldiers <laughs> that are going out. And so with this project you know, and now it has like a, an end home and an idea and it's like, I'm just following it through. When you go to other people's fashion shows, yeah, um, who does the best music outside of yourself? Wow. That's an art, right? I mean, super, super art. It's like, it's something that, it, it, it was it's hard as you know as your dj you come in with like a chip on your shoulder it's like oh i know music this is fashion i can and outside of uh you know my tense sort of like knowledge it's it's really like the young ones you know it, immediately when you said the question i'm sort of thinking like oh the heavyweights and you start thinking these big brands with big budgets and you know can get anything and then there's there's always a sort of lack of surprise twist and turn to to the soundtrack of that and of course our friend benji was doing celine shows before with phoebe philo which had that gravity to them and also the design and clothing have that same taste and tone which were really good but i'd have to give it to with my own two eyes and two ears uh in new york there's a brand called hood by air which is you know it's the young emerging they in a lot of ways crafted this cracked the door that i came through and i worked with shane oliver but they're from ballroom scene you know this is like Cult, subculture real culture new york city just five years ago and there's djs like total freedom venus x shane oliver and so what they did for their fashion show is they did an unapologetic transfer <laughs> from the ballroom clubs in new york city and just put it on a fashion show and just watched the industry sort of jaws drop at like something that they completely didn't know you know what it what was what and i think that you know music and fashion shows the best that fashion can be is when someone from one of the corners that's not represented just puts it fully unapologetically on the plate and like what we said before which i think is super important that we connected on is you like parties have to have hit people in it there has to be a relationship between music and fashion it can't be a complete crowd devoid of each other and art and to me when uh, young designers sort of like tap in it's the same way if i see like a berlin designer and i hear like heavy techno or something or you know i love that even i love when i don't understand i think is at the core of it so next track is completely like switching gears and it originated in a sort of unique context. I have a friend by the name of Theaster Gates, who is a musician. He, are you familiar with Theaster Gates? He's, he's amazing. I'll sort of send you some stuff, but he's sort of preserving Chicago and makes that a specific part of his work so much so that he inherited Frankie Knuckles' vinyl collection and has made a library on the south side of Chicago in which you can check out records from his collection. So that's just that silo of his contemporary artist. 
And he, a part of Last Art Basel, did this an amazing performance uh, at Art Basel. It was with his friends at the Vinyl Factory, did live recording of jazz music and vocal rec- art per- performance, proper performance, live band, him on vocals, cut the whole thing to vinyl as it was going. And I got a hold of it and made a track out of it but for for like because i'm very close with him and i don't want to like play this exclusive i brought a version of it that doesn't have it but that's the origination of it and then i'm super fond of uh this lyricist a vocalist serpent with feet so it's his vocal recorded uh to this production those great pants you love might bring you luck but if they ever fray boy you can stand tall in me this is a proper record exactly to release yeah or how else you're gonna share it yeah release you know i want it to be pressed up i want it to have you know i want it to be confident in its offering i want it to sit on a i often refer to it like life is like a bookshelf that's mm-hmm. empty mm-hmm. You know, everything I make, I, I archive it, and I want to be able to look back at it. Do you think? Uh, do you think people like Kanye are going to be seeing you as a potential threat? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, some no. like you. In a yeah. Place. No. Well, there's one thing I will never do is like be on a microphone. You know, that's not my. I I said that when I was DJing and doing graffiti break dancing i was like i'll leave emceeing completely off of it i have no ambition to hear my own voice in an ironic <laughs> even though i'm talking to a microphone now but it's not it's it's just like a dj it's and that's why i go back to it's like for whatever place that dj shadow or what i feel like is a dj that has a very strong opinion on music is making music as a tool to sort of spread a message but also say this is the type of dj set that i want to say like something you said is like the highest moment that we can both agree on is when you get to a crowd that you can like go not only twist and turn you can actually go down to something the most like uh mellow hypnotic baseline and that's what this song is for me and it's like with a side and id there was a stretch when james blake released his last record and i think it was an art basil we would just get high off of like speaking eye to eye just to play timeless in a club packed full at peak time and reset the vibe with hearing james blake voice in a club that's wanting to hear everything else except that or some one of my favorite things to do and i was like if you can tell that i'm having a great dj set personally anytime you hear uh kid a any song of kid a or idiotech in a cl- like i was played it my first time at circa loco this summer before i sort of knew the rules of the place i was like this is this is what i'm gonna this is just to put a warning signal that you know i come from this place because it works and that is why that it sits on this music project of mine songs like that to all my people's on the planet stimulating the mind all my people's happy knowing the time come on and push up your light up up your light up the other person who i think is is really incredible is is quest love mm. and amir thompson um in terms of do you feel that where does he fit into the sort of culture in your opinion so what quest love means to me in my musical history i guess is i could never probably the most weighted out of all these names that i've named that formulated my sound i was most intently interested in music and this will be a part of my like list of songs that i bring that make me up who i am was uh, obviously i'm from chicago common sense resurrection album was like mind-blowing you know he's my local rapper the production his air for it his musical twists and turns going from like water for chocolate or electric circus you know all-time favorite then obviously d'angelo the roots so the roots was probably you know everyone probably has like the band or the group that they most obsessed about 
more than you know i was huge into wu-tang i was diehard everything about that but it was that was it wasn't until after that phase i was like i was seeing like you know six roots concerts uh a summer or something like that i would i saw kanye west who I eventually ended up working for I saw him open up for the roots in my college town of Wisconsin. Quest Love was like, I was on the OK Player message board. So I was like, I was that much of a roots fan. <laughs> you know, like the, the key, you know, I knew everything, every album gripped me in a particular way. And because he was knowledgeable about music and he was outward facing, you know, he wasn't like a music head and it wasn't letting the fans know about his record collection and what music you know that that helped shaped me uh for the the love of you know, we know how impactful the soul Quarians and the whole all, all the offshoots from erica badu to those albums like that you know i was more you know of course the, the golden era was like the tribe called quest and the de la souls but i was a little bit younger to relate to it because I was too busy listening to the Wu Tangs and the Mob Deeps, and so when it got to the Roots, it was perfect for me. You know, most deaf, Talib, you know, like that's the tried and true hip hop ear. You know, it's funny because it's waves, right? It's, it's you and I. You you surfed long. You surfed many a different types of waves because the cultural waves are coming and going. I'm surfing. To, to trying to do the same trying to do a long surf like as artists like that's the freedom you have it's like just you're like hey how long do you want to keep doing it especially in music the whole re like the madonna theory you have to like or david bowie reinvent to stay relevant and i think in their case their music knowledge and quality of music has like the impact to sort of exist you know i would go to some jazz cafe if there was roots doing a show like that's what i probably what i'd be doing since there's nothing else to do music wise in new york right now but i think that they could but i think that they're also like their evolution is obviously at one with what's where it's at i don't know if like if we switch gears a little bit like a bad bad not good or an alpha mist or these like younger approaches to sort of musicality i want to see them sort of like exist and make that sort of like current i think that the roots will always for me be like the sort of found you know that was the thing like there was a it was weird <laughs> how i'm remembering how like specific my knowledge of that moment when the roots did fallen you know because that was sort of like a there was a weird summer two summers and i don't know if you remember it was supposed to be a tour mm. that was like common and the roots and somebody else you know heavy hitter and then common dropped out to go act and i was a fan i was like you know, I was like committed and then not. And I was like, why would you ever do that? And I think in the same moment, that's when the roots started doing Fallon. And as a like, you know, it's still like purist hip hop fans. It's like, you're not supposed to do anything except consciously rap, you know? And common, like act, like what? And then I remember thinking like after that, like a year or two after that, I was like, wow, that was super smart that common has like an he's amazing talent has an amazing acting career and isn't just one leg standing on music and then the roots is sort of instead of waiting like the, the music industry this is before it turns completely left soundcloud rap has come you know obviously become in prominence like the fate if, if they would have just stood in the sort of record buying gigging a lot world could have been you know that to me but it's like exactly quest love was djing in miami last week i think that he can surf many waves what's to be noted is like my fashion show casting in my casting was dev hines steve lacy was octavian bakar octavian who I, the last song that i play is 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 a 
is a dance floor vibe with him because I think he's an amazing next generation of UK artist that you know impacted me the same way like when I first heard Roots Maneuver on your show like whatever you know eras that was or you know bringing back the, the sound that I love who's that? Who's that? Who's that? the dopest flyest OG pimp hustler gangster player hardcore motherfucker living today to be honest I'm totally and completely on his dick and you know this man, man. it's the return of busy raw school the boy never do yet shit they can never say side 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 Stop that, stop that, get that Yeah, you know Going on dirty, Wait. going on stank yeah. Real deep on knees uh. Put these MCs on deep freeze Hit these with these and rip these Come like bust or we flip these so I was like the the striker from like like on the right from like the left midfield like <laughs> kick because i played soccer you know that was like my dad african dad like you're gonna play soccer so it's like this midfield pass to like a striker of grind of the wave of dizzy rascal because i remember imagine me i'm listening to the scene that's being played on bbc radio at the same time where America was like, we don't understand what they're saying. And I was like, wait, this album, it seems like this crossover was just about to happen. Dizzy booked a tour in America to play in this place called either the Empty Bottle or Sub Subterranean in Chicago, like small place. And I was like, for certain, it was gonna cross over. And then there was gonna be like all these artists that, you know, Boy Better Know, the t shirts. I was like into it. Cause it was like, I could understand why the house music wasn't like gonna, Broken Beat wasn't gonna work in, you know, in America. But I was for sure that that was gonna work. And so going back to an artist like Octavian, it's, you know, he's, you know, that Party Here record, which I would put as like, uh, a resounding, you know, uh, contribution to music as like sort of the, one of the great first records that he came out. I think he has a bright future at doing exactly that, stitching together what makes it intriguing for the independent artist to relate to America, but also dead on to a UK sound. But, you know, just in the same way, Slow Tide, you've, you've championed in a way that but, my produced by Mui Massa, which is yeah. you know which is great because these young artists and that's the one thing I think that as we move on this sort of crisscrossing of generations production is something that's going to set apart like the quality of whatever becomes the next big thing because I think there's amazing producers that aren't in the limelight and you now have new kids that want to be in the limelight but those that are sort of touching on the sort of textures of you know, uh, producers that are producing at a level that's like high, high, high with an, an immense musical background. That's the pop music or that's the popular uh, music that I want to see. Why would she make calls out the blue? Another thing I always felt that one of Kanye's biggest strengths yeah, yeah, yeah. was he was always really on the producer. He always is, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that he's going to come up with, with that, something. which I don't think anybody else does no, like him. No, oh, 100%. Yeah, me, anyway. me speaking from studio, you know, and, you know, in a lot of respects, I wouldn't be where I am, not where I am without Kanye West, you know, is that he has like a like a, a connection like something from outer space from like music uh those who've dedicated their life to music have like interjected his brain to produce what just doesn't sort of tangibly exist by one plus one is equals two like every dark twisted fantasy for example we had Elton John in the studio with, you know, James Blake next to some new kid who was working at the restaurant and Kanye was sort of like crafting a sound that isn't one plus one, you know, when was working with John Bryan or Bonnie Iver, Kid Cudi, or Frank O. You know, he's dedicated his life to sort of finding the melting pot, but he does it with his eyes closed. 
and it it's it's an amazing sonic thing that's in his you know he's a producer he produces clothing he's, he's a designer he's does a, he's an artist um but from someone that was so close to those albums in the past it's intense like i've heard his new project and it's cool like i remember i saw like yeah see which djs are playing like what and when you played lift yourself on your show and even because i'm so close on it and i was like yeah i can dj this is like i've always wanted records i can dj from him you know because that's what i was doing i was i was the one in the studio saying this is what it's like to play the best moments of pablo came from playing it at output completely shutting down that whole proper club with that those records lift yourself when i heard it from you i made a new edit that i could play in the club and enjoy playing that record but his new record without being sort of too you know speaking about another artist's work is abs the new one is absolutely insane production wise you know jaw dropped from the very first thing i heard all the way to the end so you know a guy like Kanye West will you know he's, he's still inspired still and you know he's he's a better artist because he's able to make it through not supposed to being where he was at and that's what i was thinking you know there's personality types he was not supposed to get a record deal you know he's always been sort of not given the exact format of the opportunity that he wants to express himself so you'll always get that tectonic plate but you know from a friend speaking you know highly about another friend it's that is the 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 sort of soil that he makes his art from you know and i think isn't it's a unique thing is like when you ask for an artist as like your entertainer then you know mo he's definitely you know i would say isn't like hey he's like i'm the, the full package that you get from me is is me you know and so it, being that close to it and sort of seeing the other end it's like no it's not surprising that there will be moments of turbulence but at the end of the day his humanity and gift will shine through because he's at the core a good person and means well for for those that don't have a voice or sort of always trying to configure and uh, you know i support him but with that said you know i relish in having my own voice so as we're doing here i can sort of speak about what makes me tick and you know like you we're all all of us are putting vibes out into the world I firmly believe that the world will be a better place with good art. Another one, record of the year for me is the Verokai on Maddie's album. Oh, I love that. I think that, you know, mm. we're sort of loosely stitching together good records that we found this year, I, that piece of music from him as an extension of that group, I think is important. And I hope that it resonates so that, you know, like we get more, more albums from all them, you know, on the upswing. Like this is something that the, one of the last messages I want to deliver since we're having good long conversation is the work that you do with your show week in, week out, years over years, has raised kids like me to go on to do things and find positions to make that piece of music. That piece of music is a direct descendant of, you know, connecting the dots, your radio show. That's where uh, the knowledge of young, that's where the excitement, you know, when every time you quote a classic piece of jazz, I sort of look back to my contemporaries like, well, where's our jazz? Mm -hmm. Or, just even, you know, when me and Alex talked about the first time that they came to play the All Winners, you know, moment, how they're backstage looking at people they looked up to. Like, that's the moment of, like, ushering new things in. And because of that, we have this piece of music that's now a part of Louis Vuitton's, like, archive is Descendants. And I wonder if you, of course, you hear things like, oh, so-and-so first 
heard this artist here, first time you heard an interview. But what I like about this interview is all that talk has already equated to something changing in a different space. We should probably wrap up, right? Yeah, I was, was, was going to say that. We'll go like another yeah, 10 hours no. without even... We Virgil, listen, um, thank you for that. It's been amazing. Um, I think we should do this on a sort of semi-regular. Yeah. Thing. I think we're just touching the surface of uh, where it's all kind of coming yeah. from. And it's always a great exchange yeah. and uh, inspiring. Um, and uh, you're also going to give us a mixtape as well, right? Yeah. So that's going to be what we're going to be listening to in a moment. Have you got any idea of what that's going to be or have you not quite worked yeah. out? No, like this conversation helped a lot because I thought about it. You know, I brought some of the songs that I played, you know, working on. But I think what I'd love to leave in your bookshelf of an archive is sort of my musical history. You know, I've never done it before, never thought to do it. But everything going back to the records that my dad was playing, you know, high life, Ghana, funk, all the way to the moments in hip hop that sort of formed my ear in that and finishing off with like what's happening in the club now, whether that's Los Angeles or whether that's Mykonos, you know, I play in between all those. So I, I just have this philosophy of like playing, you know, left field music and right field clubs <laughs> around the world so that's what this mix will be about Virgil thank you and uh, all the best cool nah no, thanks cheers <laughs>